At the heart of this tale is an ordinary plant, Papaver somniferum, the poppy. Opium is contained within the head of the flower. It can be found in fields and hedgerows in all four corners of the world. Its narcotic powers have been exploited for thousands of years. There's evidence that Papava somniferum may have been cultivated as long ago as 4000 BC in the cradle of civilization itself, Mesopotamia. Mm. In the early written records, the Sumerians refer to a plant they called Hul-gil, the plant of joy. In ancient Egypt, the Ebers papyrus, an ancient medical text, recommends smearing opium on the nipples of nursing mothers to help small children sleep. In the Odyssey, Homer writes of those grieving for the relatives lost in Troy, and how Helen, the beautiful daughter of Zeus, pours a drug into the wine to lull all pain and anger and bring forgetfulness of every sorrow. But one country would know nothing but pain and anger and would never forget the sorrow from opium. China. For thousands of years, opium was commonly used as a medicine. But it was in the 15th century that smoking its mysterious vapors became a source of pleasure. Used as an aphrodisiac to escape into blissful sexual oblivion. Yet with China's age came wisdom. By the late 18th century, they realized for all opium's benefits, it was too addictive to be trifled with. In 1729, in the early days of British trade with China, the Emperor Yongzheng banned the sale, smoking, and all trade in opium. This would soon prove to be a huge problem for the British because we were quickly developing our own more genteel addiction. Thank you. Tea, the cup that cheers but does not inebriate. By the end of the 18th century, the British were already leaders in the consumption of a nice cup of cha, importing six million pounds of tea from China a year. Now, tea was one of those small daily luxuries which the British absolutely counted on. And Guangzhou, back then known as Canton, was the only place foreign traders could buy tea in China. Mm. That's so good. Thank you.